jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. Promise you joy in the mystery. Dr. Marissa, also known as the Asian Oprah. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, laugh, love, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Pay. And welcome. You are tuned in to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa, the morning show. Welcome, welcome to Friday. Thank God it's Friday, although you know it's my job to get you to like Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays as much as Friday. But today, I'll just let you enjoy your Friday, and I know that it's going to be a, a wonderful weekend, especially since we are peeking around the corner into the good parts of what we're normal. So I know you're going to enjoy yourself. And to send you on your weekend, I have a fabulous show as usual because I'm here to talk about hope and happiness and what's right with people. So some of you don't know exactly who I am. Maybe you've accidentally tuned in to KCAA AM 1050, FM 102.3, FM 106.5, streaming everywhere, the station that leaves no listener behind. But I, you may also recognize me from my Friday drive time, prime time slot. I used to be once a week here at KCAA, exclusive home to the Asian Oprah. And, and how did I get that name? I was actually introduced to Oprah as the Asian Oprah by Michael Bernard Beckwith, my big brother, and he's the founder of Agape International Spiritual Center. He was one of the teachers on The Secret and an all-around fabulous guy, and he wrote the foreword to my number one best-selling book, but I digress. That's why they called me the Asian Oprah, and I'm here to balance out all of the bad news that you can get anywhere and everywhere because I want you to be happy 88% of the time because that's your birth rate. It'll make you feel better and it'll help your health. So we all need our full load of physical and mental health right now. So that's what the show is about. And you know also that I do some beat reporting on the side. I'm a freelancer for a New York news agency. And so I wanted to bring you and highlight a couple of stories that I just covered because it is that time. It's the time for us to talk turkey and put the moose on the table, my Canadian version of talking about the elephant in the room, about vaccines. So we're just, you know, all the people who really rush to get the vaccine are pretty much done. And now it's the people who are on the fence. So I wanted to dedicate today's show to encourage anyone who's still hesitant about getting a vaccine uh, last segment, I'm interviewing Dr. Alia Khan, what I call my show's staff doctor, to talk about the whole process and what vaccinations mean and are, and even before the COVID vaccines, what they are, what they are not, and the question is to vaccinate or not to vaccinate. The middle portion of the question of the week, sorry, question of the day, I have a great uh my former graduate student, Matthew, coming on to ask a question about communicating, communicating to clients. How do you tell somebody who doesn't want to hear what you want to say? So that's the question of the day. And then now, right now in the What's Up Doc, I'm going to bring you a couple of interviews that uh, highlight the goodness of politicians, community organizations that are helping get the message out and offering free vaccinations. Good morning, this is Dr. Marissa reporting live at the Music Center. You know me as the Asian Oprah, and I have someone special at the Music Center because this is a great event. Please introduce yourself and tell me what you do. Hi, my name is Leticia Pacui, and I am the Senior Civic Strategist at the Music Center. Wonderful, and what's going on today? Well, today we're hosting a mobile vaccination site, trying to encourage everybody to come out and get vaccinated. And it's the kickoff of a four-day tour in downtown LA in partnership with Walgreens. And why is this so important? The more we can get uh, more people vaccinated, the quicker we're going to get back to out, being out together. Absolutely. And I think some of these individuals getting vaccinated are essential workers. Correct. Frontline. 
Correct. We welcome, we're welcoming and, and making sure that our arts and culture workers in LA County are getting vaccinated and getting extra access, early access, because they're also on the front lines welcoming the public back to performing arts events. Beautiful. Thank you so much for what You're you welcome. do. You're All welcome. right, get vaccinated. Yay! <laughs> we even had uh, background music for that one. It was a great event. It happened all day. Uh, I'm going to continue to spotlight these on my social media. So please do Doc Balance on Instagram, Dr. Marissa everywhere else, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Twitter, <laughs> you name it. I'm there. I'm even on TikTok, but don't tell my daughters. But uh, I, I want to highlight all those free places that people, there's um, Hilda Salas had free tacos. So there's more and more. Here's another free event. And by the way, the Music Center does a great job. We're going to uh, organize some free Asian Oprah giveaways of some music tickets. You know, I used to do that on my show with uh, the Art Goods Catalina Jazz Festival, as well as the Saban Theater downtown, as well as the Cerritos Center for the Performing Arts. So we'll continue to do that as things open up. Just keep it here to my show and you'll get some free tickets for my Asian Oprah giveaways. And uh, today's Asian Oprah giveaway actually is a free audiobook copy of my number one bestseller, Eight Ways to Happiness from wherever you are. So the first Let's do the first eight people that go to drmarissa.life and put in Asian Oprah giveaway. We'll get the promo code for that because I want you to be happy 88% of the time. So next we have... And good morning. This is Dr. Marissa reporting live from downtown LA. And you know me as the Asian Oprah. And I cover things that are good, the, what's right with people, what's right with politicians in their effort to help us with vaccinations. And would you introduce yourself and what are you doing here? Good morning, everyone. My name is James Westbrooks and I'm the Deputy Chief of Staff and District Director for LA City Councilman Curran Price. And we're basically here trying to get our youth in our whole community, but more specifically our youth vaccinated. I'm here today doing a giveaway, giving away free headphones to our youth, as well as doing a scholarship drawing. So someone leaving here today will have an opportunity to win a $1,000 scholarship. Fantastic. So if you're a kid, or not an adult <laughs> you want to zoom in on their prizes here this is a let's see a beat studio wireless i'd have to ask my daughter what that means but uh if you want to uh, get in a drawing also for a thousand dollar scholarship if you want uh, the first we still have some left right so we still have some left come to 4301 South Central Los Angeles 90011 or they can call our office at area code 323-846-2651. Awesome. This is Dr. Marissa reporting live. Peace in, peace out. World peace through inner peace. Yep. And they're going to do more. So that number still holds. If you want to know when the next event is, and I saw a bunch of people walk away with brand new, I think they're hundreds of dollars, the Beats by Dre. I still don't know exactly what that is, but uh, there's a, it makes me wonder if I should have waited to get my vaccination. Just kidding. But uh, this is an incentive because there are populations who definitely are a little hesitant and we want to incentivize to get people, you know, get the critical masses through because I do want you all to get vaccinated and be responsible for yourself and for your loved ones. We're going to be right back with the question of the day on communication and then back with to vaccinate or not to vaccinate here on the Friday episode of Take My Advice, I'm Not Using It. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa on KCAA AM 1050, FM 102.3, FM 106.5 streaming everywhere, the station that leaves no listener behind. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You are tuned in to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. 
the morning show. And here we have one of my favorite segments. You have a question of the day today. And we have Matt, who actually is not anonymous because he was my former <laughs> favorite graduate, I should say favorite former graduate student, either one. But he has a question for me today. And I also call this my just breathe segment. So in order to help him with this question, we're gonna breathe in together. So in through the nose and release. Ah, soft shoulders, soft elbows, soft knees. Again, in <laughs> and releasing all the stories and the drama. And one last deep breath in. Connecting with me through chi, eternal energy, the breath of life that connects us all and release. Ah, and if you're driving, make sure you didn't have your eyes closed on that, but hopefully you benefited <laughs> from that just set point. It's one of the ha hashtag happy 88 tools I use just to center yourself no matter where you are. And Matthew, we're gonna congratulate you. Just became a dad. What is your baby's name? His name is Dylan. Dylan. And, and when was he born? He was born at the end of March. Actually, the beginning of spring, I would say. It's the vernal oh, equinox. That's yeah. beautiful. So what can I help you with that is currently, uh, could we, we could turn the lever up on your happiness level for? Yeah, I always love turning up the lever on my happiness uh, <laughs> throttle and have more joy. So uh, what I'm thinking about these days is having difficult conversations. So I'm working on a few consulting projects and everyone's looking to do digital transformation, but breaking the news and giving the hard news and having those difficult conversations is not always easy, especially with people that are subject matter experts that they're know-it-alls in their, in their own field, but you know they have their blinders on. So what's the best approach in dealing with people like that? Good where they're, they're not able to really receive, even if it's a great nugget, you know? Right, right, for sure. And this is a communications question. It, it also works for relationships. It also works for any kind of consulting or even sales or marketing, whatever it is. It's the big C, which is communication. And how do you word things in a way that uh, people want to hear them? And that's uh, one of my favorite areas. Um, my, my clients will say that, you know, I have that knack of being able to tell someone to go to hell in a way that they actually look forward to going. So, so here's a couple of things. If you have time before giving them the news they don't really want to hear, um, whenever I engage with clients, the very, very first meeting, and I actually learned this from, uh, Peter Block, who wrote this uh, great textbook, which I should have had you in my class read. So we're polishing up on on uh, on class here for or as an organizational psychologist. But um, when you go in as a consultant, and if you can ask the very first meeting, "Do I have your permission mm. to one collect valid data to to tell you if you are part of the problem and part of the solution. So of course, first time meeting, they're gonna say yes, they just either paid you money or they're looking for some kind of expertise from you. So that helps me right off the bat, set something up where I can come back and say, now, do you remember when you gave me permission <laughs> to tell you things where you might be part of the problem and the solution? And of course, you know, to save embarrassment, they'll nod yes. And of course, to save embarrassment, they always nod yes the first meeting. Does that make sense? So that's for it does. future. Yeah. That's for your yeah. future, right? right? So if you don't have time to do that, let's say you're already in it and you know that there are people walking around with peripherally located egos. So you know that they are the last people to be told that they're doing something wrong. 
So then I use things like this. And I preface whatever coaching I do with. Now, this might be a little difficult to hear, and I'm debating whether or not to tell you. So when someone says, I don't know if you want to know this, the natural thing is I want to know, right? So you kind of trick them into wanting to know what it is. Just the same way when you're with friends and you say something like, I want to tell you this, but I really shouldn't tell you this. What are they going to say? Don't tell me. No, they're going to say, it's okay. Tell me. Right? So you're sort of setting it up where it's clear that you're not doing this because you want to do it. You're doing this because in the, in the long run, they, they've actually paid you or they know deep down that it's something that they need to hear. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, it's a, the setup. It's called the setup. It's Dr. Marissa's setup, right? <laughs> now, I, 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 if, or I will say something like, if I knew something that may impact your effectiveness, would you want me to tell you? And I've used that a gazillion times, and I've never had anyone say no. So I'm framing it in a way that's clear that. I want to help. So, uh, you know, I may not have the right to give you this feedback. I may not be the best person to give this feedback and then give them the opportunity to say yes or no. Then it's their choice whether they want to hear it or not. The other thing I can do is say, look, you have way more experience here than I do. Just decades worth. And so I feel a little intimidated on what I should say. But you have asked me to help you. So the only way I know how to help you is to tell you something that you probably already know, but maybe you don't know the, 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 the breadth and the width of the impact of this information. But you let me know. I'm here. I will, I will give you that information, but I don't want to force it on you. So you let me know when you're ready. Sure. Yeah. I mean, getting that buy-in and having them kind of ask, answer almost the rhetorical question because you're there and their request uh, makes a big difference. But I think what comes after that is the resistance that it's like having to work through all of that. Yes, they, they said they want to hear it. They'd love to work on it. They want to see the impact. And it's very aspirational when it comes to actual tactical, technical, tangible things to do. Ah, uh, maybe not so much. So, so tying yeah. that back in every time you hit resistance and they say, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. It's just like when I do personal coaching, when people say, I can't do that. My response is, well, you think you can't do that, but you can if you choose to, but it's totally up to you. And then you can go back and, you know, this is one of those, the skill is knowing when to hold and when to fold, right? A successful That's consultant good. knows when to hold and knows when to fold and knows, and you're, you know, you're a great guy, Matthew. You are definitely, uh, you know, you, you've got great bedside manner for, for a consultant, for a graduate. He single-handedly convinced me to do stuff during COVID that I didn't want to do. So <laughs> you have influence. So then the other side of it is because you're so um, humble, because you're so, you know, you, you play in the background a lot, you play, you know, uh, 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 you, you don't use your authoritative power up front. 
and and that's good and then sometimes it's not so good so my coaching to you would be yes is to own what you do know instead of coming for first and for, foremost with what you don't know so i would balance out everything that i just said mm-hmm. with I am not a subject matter expert in your company. You've had three decades worth of experience here and you know the people in a way that I don't. However, I have worked with, and then you name drop, this company, that company, this company, and you're not alone. They also struggle with these kinds of communication, conflict management, leadership, culture, you whatever that thing is, they also suffer with that. Do you want to know what I did with them? So then you're leading with, you know, I don't know anything, but <laughs> I actually do know something. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, I like to kind of be softer and more gentle, but it's definitely, I it, amazing insight i think you know i try to shine the light onto them because they're the executive they're the running the show and i'm you know i just whisper something in their ear and i'm like how about this and then i see it happening two weeks from now i'm like wow he took my advice so yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. And, and and i want you then to go back and say hey i was so happy to hear that you implemented that tell me how that went so then it plants the seed again. That wasn't your idea. That was mine. So your <laughs> job is to finagle yourself into a little bit more power. That would be my right. advice. Does that help? Absolutely. Thank you for that insight. I, I try to steer away from it, but I think it's it's there. And I, I don't want to be that authoritative kind of role, but I am that to some degree. So, you know. You have uh, to be. You have to be your new dad. You got to put more money on the table with your son, right? <laughs> and no, your wife did not pay me to say that. <laughs> All right, we're yeah, at we're the right. end of this segment, so we're going to say goodbye to Matt, but thank you so much thank for coming so on. Much. And uh, just keep it tuned here. Take my advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa, the morning show. And we'll be right back for more. <laughs> And welcome back. You are tuned into Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa, the morning show. And it is, thank God it's Friday because it is Friday. And I know that you are just excited about this weekend that actually is a little bit different because masks are coming off vaccinations are going on. And as you saw from the first clip, I get to cover those great events now that we have uh, politicians, community members, everyone really trying to encourage all of us to have herd immunity. Uh, You remember my guest from a couple of days ago, um, Dr. Monique was talking about vaccinations and uh, I had Dr. Anshu Batra uh, last week also talking the same thing. So, you know, while the, while the message is hot around vaccinations, I thought I would rebroadcast a great interview that I have with someone I'm calling my staff doctor, and that is Dr. Alia Khan. So if you have any hesitations, but you still respect medical science, please, 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 and doctors, then I am uh, happy to bring you this to, to, again, grab anyone who is right now vaccination hesitant, have them listen to this segment and enjoy the facts around vaccinations. You might remember a few months ago, I brought on an expert to talk about to mask or not to mask. And now the question is to vaccinate or not to vaccinate. So I brought back 
my, I'm going to call her my staff doctor <laughs> for the show. And she is Dr. Alia Khan, Occupational Medicine Redis Residency Director and Assistant Clinical Professor at UCI. She's a board certified in both internal medicine and occupational medicine. Dr. Khan completed her residency training in internal medicine from Mountainside Hospital in Montclair, New Jersey, and a fellowship in occupational and environmental medicine from UC Irvine, where she also received a master's degree in environmental toxicology. So please welcome back to my studio, Dr. Alia Khan. Dr. Khan, welcome, welcome. So glad you could join me again. Thank you for taking the time because you really um, are my, my not, it's not token, but <laughs> you are definitely my resident expert in something that I never thought would have so much issue, which is medical science. So you are my representative of medical science and there's a lot of hubbaloo around vaccinations right now as we try to vaccinate people in America and um, never thinking it was gonna be this much trouble as well. But I wanted you to provide uh, some reason and basis in medical science uh, about vaccination. So I'm gonna rewind right back to the beginning, just about vaccinations that, you know, we kind of lost sight. Either you're someone who, you know, just, okay, here you go, vaccinate me and no questions asked and just take, uh, you know, the mainstream, okay, vaccinations are good for you to this new thing that is just like, oh no, you're not touching me. So why would we want to vaccinate anything in the first place? So the history of vaccination in a, in a little short time. Sure, sure. Um, thank you for having me on again. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, just as a reminder, I'm here to, you know, let you know my personal views as a, a physician and not here to represent my employer. Um, and it's a great question asking about, you know, the history of vaccinations. I think immunizations are, you know, one of the um, miracles of medical science that before we had immunizations, we had rampant infectious diseases. Um, many deaths um, and other issues and permanent issues. You remember, people can remember polio and how many people became disabled at young childhood age. And now we don't have that issue. We're immunizing our children against polio um, amongst many other diseases that can cause um, many ramifications, chronic issues and disability and, and death. And really what immunizations are is a way for your body to be able to fight an infection if you were to be introduced to it. So we have this amazing immune system that where we can, and I tell this to my kids all the time about <laughs> immunizations and how we build up antibodies to infections. And sometimes if you get infected, you know, our immune system attacks the bacteria or the virus and eliminates it from our system and um and it creates memory uh of that bacteria and the virus so that we were exposed to it in the future we can then fight it but our immune system is also limited um in the fact that you know we may not be able to fully fight the infection when we are sick um, and that if we get reintroduced to a certain virus again, we may not fully be able to fight it again. Much like the common cold, um, which is a coronavirus, uh, you know, we can get common colds every year. And so we kind of lose that memory sometimes too. Um, so immunizations really do help us prevent um, getting infected from very severe infectious diseases and gives us that memory to fight them, um, even if we've been infected in the past too. Got so it. that's the basic, you know, I would, you know, uh, very basic overview of why immunizations are important. Got it. So let me see if I understood that. Um, the body has a natural disease fighting uh, ability that produces something to fight whatever that disease is. And by introducing a small bit of the actual disease, the body produces uh, antibodies or a, an ability or a memory, as I like the way you said that, I've never heard that before, a memory of what that 
foreign body is to fight. Did I get that? Yeah, you did a great job. Okay, good. <laughs> Sometimes I have to like make sure I got that. So, so that's the principle or the fundamental um, science behind vaccinations, right? So if we go back, like you said, polio um, and like flu shots, I don't even remember when that came in, but we began to make vac vaccinations, you know, in kids, right? We wanna protect them in school from getting those diseases that used to kill the kids, right? And for the most part, um, what was the data? So I would say, like you said, um, sometimes it forgets the memory. So even if you've had a vaccination, sometimes you're still gonna get that sickness, right? There, there is that possibility. And if you're sick, sometimes by getting the vaccination, it can make you sicker. Is that accurate? Because the, the system is not perfect? No, I would say that about our immune system, not about the vaccination. So oh. our immune system is not perfect. Okay. Um, so with that's why you can get multiple colds in a year and uh, colds year after year. We don't have a vaccine for the regular coronaviruses that cause the common colds. Um, flu is a, is a bit different in that we do get the flu shots every year uh, because we have different strains of flu floating around. So we have to be able to ex you know, predict and expect what kind of flu we'll be having in our area and then scientists develop the vaccine accordingly. So it's really our immune system is not perfect um, and needs that help from immunizations. Got it, got it. Now, what's the difference between cold viruses, which you say coronavirus is a cold, so we've had coronavirus for a long time, but we didn't necessarily associate all of this craziness with it, right? And then you have flu. So give me a little basic lesson around that. There are two different viruses. Um, coronaviruses are a family of viruses, really. So there's different types of coronaviruses. So the one that we're battling right now um, is called SARS-CoV-2. Um, we've had another SARS uh, before uh, that really didn't uh, have much of an effect on the U.S. population. And we have other types of more benign coronaviruses. And then influenza is a virus that causes the flu. So they're different viruses, essentially. Right. Got it. And and because the only difference I know is, you know, what, starve a fever, feed a cold. That's basically I didn't never really understood it. But I've heard that, you know, fevers, there's I mean, sorry, uh, viruses, there's really, or is it colds? Which one has no solution? Which one, it does not respond to an antibiotic? Um, well, our body just develop, can develop antibodies really to any virus or bacteria. It really depends on, some of the viruses are just very smart um, on how they escape and how they react. So, every, you know, it, there are, many, many different viruses and bacteria out there. Okay. And depending on the virus and the bacteria and how they infect us, how our body is going to develop an, an immune response. And everyone's going to be acting differently depending on the virus and bacteria too. Some people who have a lower um, efficient immune system, people who are on immunosuppressant medication, for example, may not be able to fight a, a virus or a bacteria as compared to a young healthy person. So there's a lot of nuances there. Got it, got it. So, um, so now we're, we're, we're to today with this special coronavirus. And the last time you came on, one of the things that, we, that I got out of it is how much we don't know. At that time, we did not know very much about the coronavirus. We didn't understand it. We didn't, you know, uh, uh, couldn't anticipate. We we were just really clueless as to this specific strain of the coronavirus. So, what has changed since we last talked uh, about what we do know about the coronavirus? So, yeah, I mean, when we started um, with the pandemic back in January, February of last year, and really March, it's 
we knew very little about the, the virus. Um, it's a novel coronavirus, it's a new coronavirus. And, and we're still learning, we have to be humble that we're still learning about this virus. But in the span of a year, we have learned a lot about this virus and how it attacks the immune system, you know, what kind of um, illness it can cause, um, at least in the short term, we still have to learn more about the long term effects about this virus, which is, this is the scary part. Um, and we've learned how to uh, prevent infection, you know, masking, social distancing, hand washing, they work and how to treat um, infections in the hospital. We've gotten better in terms of treatment. And now the fact that we have not just one vaccine, but two vaccines, possibly three in the near future. I mean, that is um, a scientific miracle. I would just say that. It is a scientific miracle. So, so yeah, let's talk about that miracle. Um, uh, th like you said, there's, there's one or two out and I've heard and spoken to people who say, you know, I don't, I'm, I, I, I believe in vaccinations. I think they're a good thing. I want to get a vaccination, but I'm a little concerned. Like this was such a, you know, is it really a miracle or is it a rush to, you know, we got to fix this. We got to get a solution. So let's rush to, clinical trials, rush through that process, rush through the normal, what takes years and, 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 and jump on it so that it takes three months. So can we trust this whole process of that to bring to market these vaccines? So the trials that were done for um, the vaccines that are now have a, a EUA approval from the FDA, the Pfizer and the Moderna trials, they were speedy in, in their um, development and their trial, but that doesn't mean that there were shortcuts. And the FDA has reviewed the studies and they have a high standard for safety. Um, these clinical trials are very robust um, and, and like I said, very held to a very high standard of safety. And there are multiple phases to a clinical trial. You, you probably heard on the news, you know, you have your phase one trial, phase two, phase three, and all these phases are looking at safety and, and efficacy uh, of the vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, our listeners should really understand that, that there's such a high integrity um, and ethics that are involved in doing clinical trials. Um, also important to note that we've been studying coronaviruses for a long time. So even though this is a novel coronaviruses, we've, you know, scientists have been studying other types of coronaviruses. Um, the, this specific coronavirus was um, genetically sequenced in the early days of the pandemic, which really helped scientists get a hold of you know how this virus is infecting people and then subsequently starting to make um or develop research to uh make that this vaccine mm -hmm. the pfizer yeah go ahead no 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 go ahead oh so i was just going to say that the pfizer and the moderna vaccines have this what's called mrna technology and which is a a huge thing because uh, it's the first time we're using it in a vaccine. However, it's not the first time it's been used or researched. And um, scientists have been using mRNA technology to look at other vaccines and cancer research. And it's very nimble in how we can use this new technology with vaccines. Um, and funding, you know, I just have to say there's been a lot of funding that's put in to this specific um, vaccine trials, which we typically don't get in other vaccines. And if you really have funding, you can get a lot done. There's also been a lot of um, collaboration between different countries and leaders and governments and scientists and, and researchers and pharmaceutical companies because we're in a pandemic and this is an emergency and there was a sense of need to do this as fast as possible without cutting any corners really. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I would just note is with clinical trials, you need enough volunteers to participate. Um, and really they did get a lot of volunteers in both the Pfizer and the Moderna, which helped get to their results. 
Beautiful, beautiful. And if you've just tuned in and you're wondering who I'm talking to, and you sort of recognize her, you are tuned in to take my advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa every Friday at primetime drive time on my KCAA, CNBC, NBC News Radio channel. And In, and this is exactly why I wanted to bring you on to provide the balance of the good news. The good news is we are collaborating. We are having a sense of urgency. There is care. You can't just shortcut is what you're saying. The whole process of bringing uh, a vaccine to market. Um, and, you know, I, I'm going to skip to a question I was going to ask later. This whole conspiracy justified ignorance is what I'm calling it. Hashtag, my new hashtag is justified ignorance. It's that if you're listening and you have set your mind that this is, you know, just a bunch of people like Bill Gates who want to get rich. And so all this, uh, um, you know, vaccines is just to make the companies rich and to scare the common person. Speak to that, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would just say that knowledge is power. And especially in this age of digital media, social media, we can get our knowledge and from so many different sources. And it can be very confusing. You know, I have patients who, you know, regularly confused about what is the reality? What is this a good thing? Is this not a good thing? There's a lot of mixed messages. So I understand if people are confused because there is a lot of different ways that we can get our, our news and our information and our resources. So I think being able to know what your reputable resources are is very important and being able to just educate ourselves on, on the science and the facts can help us with any uneasiness that we may have, any questions that we may have. Um, so I, I would just say, you know, trust the 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 scientists and, and the physicians and, and read up on using reputable journals and, and articles that are out there. Um, sometimes the mainstream media may not be able to provide all those type of resources to us. Um, but the CDC has some great information on their website for the public and your local healthcare age um, healthcare departments may have that I'm in Orange County. So the Orange County Healthcare Agency website has a lot of information and FAQs that the public um, can read up on on the vaccine. Beautiful. And where do you go for your information besides the Orange County? Um, it depends on what I'm looking for. So if I'm looking for, you know, data on, you know, how many vaccines are out there and what the case numbers are looking like, the health department and um, is a great resource because I want to know what's going on in my local area. Johns Hopkins website has another great resource to track, you know, globally the cases that are going on. And, um, I, you know, I personally read journal articles from ev that are evidence based peer reviewed journals from, like, for example, New England Journal of Medicine. They have a lot of great information. Um, it's more technical, though. So if you want to really get into the weeds of, of the vaccine, they have a great FAQ document, too, that if you really want to get into the weeds, you can look into that, too. Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I think that that is really, if we're going to make this work, we have to stop, um, you know, contempt before investigation and uh, running off with whoever posted the last sensational thing about, you know, the, the vaccinations and, and all of this cancel culture that we have and the social media trying to control what is said and what is not said. I think the knowledge is power is, as you said, it, the most important thing, do the research, look it up yourself. Don't believe a flash in the pan statement from anyone. And um, I have to, to say this because, um, you know, without getting political, uh, we've, we've really had trouble um, with conspiracy theory more than we ever have in our entire, my, my experience alive. And I think one of the reasons is uh, the Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu says, in the absence of greatness, pettiness, 
prevails. And that, to me, is explains why we've had problems with conspiracy theories. We've got no leadership saying, you know, this is this is what we're this is what we're facing and the transparency. So now the good news is we have transparency. I've never seen that word used as much <laughs> as before. So that's the good news. So that's what we're focused on today on this show. And uh, uh, and I just love the fact that I have been on the air for 479 consecutive weeks and I have this plethora of resources of past interviews. And this one was not that long ago and it totally uh, supports my cajoling that I'm trying to do with my new audience in the morning, as well as my old uh, uh, loyal audience from this show to really, really, really take vaccination seriously. We've got to, um, I don't have to take her out of her rounds to have her come and speak again, because it's the same good information. It's relevant, it's pertinent, it's timely. Um, the, the mechanics of vaccinations. And if you um, wanna watch the whole interview, then go to my YouTube channel and you'll get it there as well as all the other platforms. Just put in Dr. Marissa and Dr. Alia Khan. And later on in the interview, the one thing I wanted to bring up before I let you go today, Friday, is, uh, you know, sh the conspiracy theories that are saying that, oh, you know, there's something in the vaccine and that's why everybody, you know, that's why the government or the private or whoever it is, Bill Gates, what, whatever it is, it's, you know, conspiring against you. Uh, there's a tracker in the vaccine and it's like, she picks up her phone and she said, that's already done. <laughs> so there's really nothing to be conspiracied about on that. That's why, you know, you look at something and all of a sudden you see ads on your social media is because it's already being done. We are already, if you haven't watched Social Dilemma, do. Because um, I don't know about being controlled, maybe by consumerism, but, uh, you know, it's kind of silly to think that there's something in the vaccination. So please, please, please look at the science. Please do your own investigation if you if you want to. I do my part in bringing on very uh, well researched, well thought of, up to date, current doctors on my show for a reason. So you don't have to do all that research. It's not my, you know, I don't know everything, but I do know that I get to choose to make sure where my information is not coming from a not real doctor or it's a Russian you know, news outlet trying to sway our minds on something. And, and when people share you know, stuff, I look at where the source is coming from. Are they a balanced news network? So I, I just hope that you have heard what Dr. Khan has said. I hope that if you haven't had a vaccination, that you're not on the fence anymore, that you are going to do your part to be responsible for yourself and for your loved ones. Okay, so so the answer to to vaccinate or not to vaccinate is absolutely yes. Let's all vaccinate so we can all get to a place where the pandemic is in our rear view mirror. All right, and that's it for this week. I think this is my second full week on the air on the morning show. Thank you for sticking with me. We'll be back on Monday for more. Take my advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa on KCAA AM 1050, FM 102.3, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere. The station that leaves nowhere. No, the station that the station that leaves no one. The station that leaves no listener behind, as well as exclusive home of Dr. Marissa, the Asian Oprah. I hope you have the best weekend ever. Remember, it's all about balance. Peace in, peace out. World peace through inner peace. Mm -hmm.